Hello Aries, welcome back to the channel. Thank you as always for tuning back in. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Leila, the Lenormand Reader, and I focus almost exclusively on the amazing Lenormand practice. So be sure to have a look at all of the links that I have for you so you can explore and master this amazing Lenormand deck. So Aries, welcome to April. Here we are with your April cards from your Astro Clock. These are the house letter and anchor. And this really points to receiving news and uh, the anchor here has an element of certainty. So I really think this is about getting feedback and getting um, the news that you had been expecting. It's also likely because of the house here, Aries, that this has to do with home affairs or perhaps in relation to the team on the job or some other group that you are part of. But definitely you hear back, there is news. And I also think Aries, because of the anchor and house being strong cards, it's likely to be positive news, although we'll confirm this with the portrait cards. And I also think that you might have to act on it. The thing about the anchor is that it has a way of concluding something. So it can be a, a conclusion or like an understanding or something that is sealed off and completed through this news. So we're going to draw your nine card portrait and we're going to see what else we get about these cards and other uh, insights for your month. So let's set them aside and let's draw your portrait. Okay, Aries, here is your portrait and we are seeing the house as we do in the Astro Clock cards and we are seeing a pretty peaceful energy all throughout. We do have the tricky clouds and snake here, but I think this has to do with you turning away from something because of a tricky situation or because you are not really into um, this relationship. In the center of your portrait, we have the beautiful tree. It is a very peaceful card. It creates a sense of centeredness and wisdom. And I really think that you know where you stand, you know your foundations, and this really works well with the house and anchor that we see in your Astro Clock cards. We see the woman as your cover cards. This can represent you, Aries, or it can represent someone else in your life and someone who seems to be pretty significant. Now, with the tree and snake, it seems to me that you had been waiting on this person to maybe come around. Uh, perhaps she had been away. Maybe there wasn't much communication between the two of you. And that's probably why we see the letter uh, in the Astro Clock cards. In the second diagonal though, we have a supportive uh, line for a relationship. The ring tree and flowers is very nice for a relationship and for a developing relationship, a deepening connection. And the flowers can also point to the idea of return and renewal. So again, I feel that someone had been away and now there's an opportunity to be in touch with this person. In the top row, we have a similar idea. We have the mountain between the woman and flowers and the mountain is often a card of distance it can be physical distance because it's associated with foreign locations, but in relationships, it also has an element of coldness. But with the flowers, there seems to be a return of someone. And again, I feel that there is um, the anchor here that really supports this idea. The house tree and moon is lovely for spending time at home, for being at ease with people, with yourself, with this environment. And the moon here can suggest an invitation or like a positive evolution in this environment. So again, it lines up well with what we see in the Astro Clock cards. And I also want to say, Aries, that, um, you know, it's a good idea to allow things to happen. We're seeing um, a more or less passive energy here where, um, you know, you allow things to unfold, you allow things to happen, you allow this person to come around and you just be at peace with yourself. Now, the bottom line is the trickiest line because it has both the clouds and the snake together with the ring. And so this points to issues in a relationship. You could be questioning the other person's commitment, their intention, their authenticity. And I think because of the snake being in this position where I feel that the whole portrait sort of feeds into this area, um, it is likely areas that you decide to turn away and move away. Or perhaps if there's an offer or some news, you decide it against it. The woman with the house and ring is very supportive for a relationship. We could be looking at a family relationship or closer relationships. And so this really tells us who this is about. So this can give us a clue about this woman. But also Aries, I think it has to do with your commitments and your priorities. So if things that come 
this month are not fitting with your foundations and your your sense of stability, you're probably gonna pass on them. And notice that the house T crosses this middle row. I really think that your peace should not be disturbed at all this month. The mountain with the tree and clouds, again, I feel this element of distance uh, between you and this person, and maybe you were wondering you know, about what is going on with this person, and here it ties into uh, the bottom row where we suggested that you could move away. So again, Aries, I'm seeing that you don't need to do anything about this. And in fact, maybe it's in your best interest not to, because it turns out to be maybe not the most ideal situation for you. So sort of just let it go. You don't have to force anything. And the flowers, moon and snake would have been bright because of the flowers with the moon. And I do think this person comes back into the picture. But I have to say, Aries, because of the snake, I'm not sure how, you know, how good the relationship is moving forward. I think there could have been you know, some changes, and maybe both of you grew in different ways, and uh, you could be wondering how, you know, how fitting it is moving forward. Um, but again, I feel that because you have so much inner peace and so such a solid foundation within yourself and in your life, I don't think this really affects you. I also think, Aries, that you have really good judgment and you have a strong sense of clarity around what works for you and what doesn't. Um, so overall, Aries, it looks like you could reconnect with someone and get feedback from them, but moving forward, it's not really ideal for you. So it's best to sort of just take it easy and allow this person to come around at their own pace, allow this news to be followed up on its own pace. You don't have to do much about it. I also think you're going to find that it's not fitting, and so you know you're going to I don't think you have to do anything about it, but you sort of, you, you know, you're sort of reserved, like you you have um, strong boundaries and you don't need to make a case for any of it. You don't need to make a point because you're so um, at ease with yourself and, you know, you have such a strong inner foundation. So uh, people around you are going to pick it up. In general, Aries, I would say it's definitely a time for slowing down, taking time out, um, taking a break and uh, not being pushy about anything, including with people and other areas of your life. So a slower month uh, where you're able to follow up on some things, but not necessarily taking so much action about it. So let me know where these ideas play out for you, Aries. It's always interesting to read your details um, because it's nice to see how different people can resonate with the same set of cards. Um, so again, take it easy. Best of luck with this, Aries. Thank you as always for watching and until next time, take very good care of yourself. Hello Taurus, welcome back to the channel. Thank you as always for tuning back in. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Leila, the Lunama Reader, and I focus almost exclusively on the Lunama practice. So Taurus, be sure to have a look at all of the resources and the links that I have for you so you can discover and master this amazing deck. Taurus, welcome to April. We have your April cards from the Astro Clock, the Heart, Man, and Tree. And obviously these are really nice cards for a relationship. It looks like there is a connection that is developing. I also think this is someone whom you can trust and rely on and really enjoy some good times with or you know go to for support. Now who this man is in your life is flexible. It could be anyone really, but typically the man and woman in the Lenormand deck, they tend to suggest people of significance. So we're gonna put this aside and draw your nine card portrait and see what else we get about these cards as well as additional insights for your month of April. Okay, Taurus, look at these cards. We have the man in both uh, sets of cards. And really this column stands out to me because it points to this man leaving. We have the road and the coffin on either side of the man. And on top of this, it is on the right-hand side of your portrait. So I feel that this would be what happens later on or an outcome. And so in contrast a little bit with what we see, well, not really in contrast, with the Astro Clock cards, it can mean that you'll have to be patient and wait for this person maybe to return. But it sounds like um, they, are, they are going to leave uh, this month. We do have the Fox as your cover card. It can be a bit of a tricky card, but it is as your cover card, it gives you the advantage of being smart and clever. And I also think uh, that you need to uh, be patient. Again, really advantages you with this element of being patient and diplomatic. Now with the letter and coffin, 
I really think here, Taurus, that you shouldn't follow up. You should let this person come around and this would line up really well with the tree and heart. This idea of being patient and waiting on this person. The letter and coffin is typically, it is news being delayed, but because there is the fox as well here, which is about being diplomatic and clever, I really think, Taurus, that you should hold off on contacts, following up, and definitely not doing anything that commits you to something like signing paperwork or sealing a deal and things like that. You should hold off and wait a little bit. With the fish letter and road, we sort of see what this is about. It can be about work and money and finances. And with the road on the other side of the letter, you are wanting to uh, take up a certain opportunity and move forward with it. But again, I really think Taurus that it's the time to wait a little bit, maybe to double check things and also to wait for this person to come around. Now the top row is also telling in these ways. We have the fox with the mountain and road. I, I would really take this Taurus as moving away from a certain situation or giving it time. The mountain is a card of travel like the road, but it also is a card of blockages and it creates a certain distance. So again, I'm seeing that there's a need to put things on hold a little bit before moving forward. Now the lily letter and man is lovely. It points to an offer and you can see here towards that a T crosses this column and this column is very clear about a job, um, a job offer or a business opportunity, whichever way you operate. So again, I feel that the theme that we are focusing on for you this month, Taurus, is focused on your work, your career, your projects, your business. And we see that there's an offer that comes through this man and we see that this is what you are waiting on. The bottom row is also lovely. It points to a beautiful opportunity for the fish and sun. It can have a really good financial element. The money element can be strong, but again, we do have the coffin at the end of the line here. So I feel that you are gonna have to wait on this a while longer for it to materialize. I think it could try your patience a little bit, Taurus, but your fox is clever and it knows how to you know, how to manage the waiting time and also how to negotiate when time comes. Now the mountain letter and sun is beautiful. I really think that at some point you're gonna get um, the offer and the news. Uh, but then again, like I said at the outset, we have the road uh, man and coffin here that can either point to an ending or it can point to a parting or some kind of um, waiting uh, that is um, that you need to put up with. So. Overall, Taurus, I think the, the month is focused on an offer, on a job offer, work opportunities, or other financial matters for you. I think things come with a delay and you're gonna need to wait on them to materialize. I also think, Taurus, it's important that if you have the offer already and things are moving, that you do not rush them and that instead you make sure to do your due diligence and to take your time with the decision. Another scenario that I think can possibly play out with these cards, Taurus, is that um, really it's based on how we have strong offer cards here and an ending of sorts here. So another scenario is that you make a decision to take up an offer or to make a change, and then you can decide to end your connection with the current um, opportunity that you're in. That too is possible. Um, there is an element of going in separate directions or you know moving apart and it sounds that that it's because you're going to be busy with your work with your opportunities so some other things are going to be put on hold what these other things are it can depend on your specific circumstances but what i just suggested is that you can make a change from the current opportunity you're in to a new one to a different one um, I also think, um, Taurus, just to wrap up, that in view of your Astro Clock cards, um, it's a good idea to maintain a good relationship with everyone involved. There's no need to make, you know, strong statements, uh, sharp partings and things like that. Uh, you know, there, it's an easy transition. It's a smooth transition and it looks like it's going to be very bright for you work-wise, career-wise and financially. Uh, so overall, Taurus, I think this is a lovely month. It's a bit on the slower side, but there's definitely some really good progress with regards to your work, money, uh, and business. And it's about managing the relationships that are affected by this and that are involved with this. 
I think you're at a juncture, you're going to make a decision and move forward um, into this lovely opportunity. So let me know what you make of these ideas, Taurus. Let me know how it played out for you. Let me know who is this person that you sort of had to move away from in order to enjoy this change and how you manage this. I look forward to the details if you're willing to share them. Very best of luck with the month. Thank you so much for tuning in. And until next time, take very good care of yourself. Hello, Gemini. Welcome back to the channel. Thank you for tuning in. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Leila, the Lenormand Reader, and I focus almost exclusively on the amazing Lenormand deck. So be sure to check out all the links and resources that I have for you so you can discover and master this amazing practice. Gemini, welcome to April. We have your April cards from your Astro Clock. We have the Cross Book and Writer. And the book is a mystery card. It can be matters that are unknown. The cross also adds an element of importance to this. And the and writer the suggests that there is news that comes through. So I think you're in for some important news or an important revelation or an important discovery. And uh, we're going to see how it affects your month through the portrait cards. And we'll also learn more about who the writer might be because the writer is sometimes a messenger and it can represent a person. Um, the uh, cross and book is sometimes associated with religion and spirituality, Gemini. So if you're getting into certain topics or certain passion projects or, you know, certain ideas that uh, resonate with you in a certain way, then this could be a good month for doing some research, for getting into interesting topics and um, you know, seeing how it lines up with your overall overall goals. The writer is actually really good with um, with going after your goals. So let's move these cards aside and let's draw your portrait cards and see what is ahead for you. Okay, Gemini, here is your portrait cards. And there's a bit of a mix of things here. We have three very bright cards, the key, clover, and star. These are three of the brightest cards of the deck, actually. So very beautiful energy here. Very nice to see the star in the right-hand side column because it's the column that's associated with outcomes most of the time. We do have a couple of challenging aspects here with the fox and mouse, and the coffin can be challenging as well. Uh, so we are seeing some kind of ending or I think delays and things that are on hold. I think this could try your patience a little bit, Gemini, but as we saw with your Astro Clock cards, you are, uh, you're going to get the news or it's going to come with some delay. Now, as, you, as your cover card, we see the woman, and the woman can represent you or she can represent another person. I, I feel, Gemini, that she could be the person you're waiting on. And, uh, you know, the mystery of the book here, you know, she could be taking her time or delayed or some things are happening and that could be trying your patience. And I say that because we have the mouse in the middle of uh, the whole portrait and the mouse is a little bit challenging. It is not dramatic, but it points to uh, it delays, issues, glitches, bumps, and things like that. And we tie it with the garden. So the garden is a place or a community or an environment. And there can be some tensions between you and another person or within a certain environment, Gemini. And so I feel that that could be the reason why you could take a step back or sort of distance yourself a little bit. Now with the key mouse and child, there is a new beginning at hand and I think you're excited about it. I think it's the right beginning. But again, I feel that things are a little bit delayed for you, Gemini, this month. And there are some issues that come your way. So I think it's really about dealing with it until you see it through because as we're gonna see here, you will absolutely embrace this new beginning and enjoy this happy time that it's going to bring. In the top row, we have the woman, coffin, and child, and this clearly points to what we've been saying as well, Gemini. First, the coffin and child point to an ending and a beginning. And, you know, I've been seeing this a lot in the weekly readings for you and through other signs as well. There are powerful changes during this time. Uh, so that's one. We have a confirmation of the ending and the beginning, but also, Gemini, we could be seeing that the new beginning starts with a delay because the coffin is also a card of delays and it matches a lot of what we're seeing with the mouse and uh, the book. In the second uh, row, we have a beautiful message thanks to the star, especially in this position of the line. So the coffin, not the coffin, the fox and the mouse are challenging cards. They bring challenges, issues. I think there can also be some characters that try to get in your way 
this matches what we saw in the first uh, diagonal. But what's really lovely is that the star is a healing card and a card of success, and it's going to help you overcome any of the challenges that come your way. Here is to a lovely line. We have the key clover and garden. This is a very beautiful line, uh, Gemini. We have two very powerfully positive cards together with the garden, which is um, a card of space and community. So you could be very successful within a certain environment. You could get a major opportunity. Uh, your social life can be very good once you're past uh, you know, these challenges. So very clearly a breakthrough and a very clear indication that you overcome any of these challenges. Also note, Gemini, that the bottom row and the right-hand side column, they tend to be the outcomes and the manifestation of the of the process. We see very bright cards in this side and the challenges are in the transition. So that is really nice to see that the outcome is going to be really great and positive. Now the woman, fox and key can be a little bit tricky because the fox and woman can represent someone who is self-interested or a bit selfish. She could be the tricky person we've been referring to a few times already. But also Gemini, the fox is very good with jobs and with the key you could land a really good project, a really good job, a really good opportunity, whether that is work related or not. So very nice cards here. It also tells us that you're going to overcome and successfully manage anyone who's trying to trick you or who's a bit difficult, you know, or causing this delay that we're seeing. Now the coffin, mouse and clover, very clear message here, Gemini. At the end of the day, the delay is overcome. You overcome the issues and you're able to move forward. Notice that the clover T crosses the bottom row, so success is very much at hand. It's just that there is, uh, there are some challenges, some glitches, some problems that you resolve. So definitely don't be discouraged by whatever comes your way, Gemini. Just put it in perspective, size it down, because soon enough it's going to turn around and you're going to be able to embrace this wonderful beginning. We have the child star and garden. This is wonderful for success across the board. It is wonderful for this new beginning, whether it's in your personal life or your work life or in other contexts. There is a very beautiful message here of success and possibly even popularity and um, you know the sense of appreciation and recognition that can come with that. So these are some really beautiful cards, Gemini. There is a bit of a waiting game. There is the need to put up with some delays, some issues, some problems. But at the end of the day, you're able to move forward and really embrace this very beautiful opportunity, this success, and uh, possibly even some recognition and popularity. So you let me know, Gemini, what new beginning you're stepping into. Let me know what were these issues that you were dealing with. As always, I look forward to the details and hopefully you're willing to share them. Hey, best of luck with the month. Thank you as always for tuning in and until next time, take very good care of yourself. Hello Cancer, welcome back to the channel. Thank you as always for tuning in. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Leila the Lenormand Reader and I am one of the few people who focuses almost exclusively on the Lenormand practice. So be sure to have a look at all of the links and resources that I have for you so you can explore and discover and master this amazing Lenormand deck. Cancer, welcome to April. We have your April cards from your 2024 Astro Clock. We have the Key, Clover, and Star, and these are three very bright cards, Cancer. I mean, this is just a lovely triplet. Um, this is a month for wish fulfillment, for achieving goals, for shining, and for really solving any issues that you might have. Now, in my experience, Cancer, very bright cards in the Astro Clock tends to be um, associated with challenging cards and the portrait cards. So we're gonna draw your nine card portraits and see what we get. Of course, I don't wanna affirm this, uh, but I'm saying it's a pattern that I tend to find when I do these readings. And what ends up happening is that the Astro Clock cards helps you overcome uh, any challenges that could come through the portrait cards. And of course, we want more details about these very bright cards because bright cards tend to be a bit general. So let's set these aside and let's draw your portrait. Okay, Cancer, here is your portrait, and yes, we do have a couple of challenging cards, the whip and the mouse, but we also have two of the very bright cards and the same ones from your Astro Clock. It's really nice to see the key as your cover card as well. So again, I am convinced that any challenges, you are gonna be able to resolve them very easily. Um, it's really about what these challenges are about. 
And I think because of the man and the heart in the middle, we could be looking at a relationship or perhaps um, you know, some connection that is outside your personal life. That too is possible. Now here's what's really nice. We have the key heart and man. This is lovely for a relationship. You could be attracted to someone or you could be interested in someone if this is not a love or a personal thing. It could just be um, some kind of affinity with a person. I also think this sounds like a really supportive person despite some issues that could pop up. So again, remember that what's going to happen here is that you're able to resolve the challenges. So the, the person is um, you might have faced some issues with this person, but it's clear that it's going to be resolved. And we're going to see this very clearly through this column. And the bottom row is also supportive. Now in the second diagonal, we have the cross heart book, and this would be feelings that are unrevealed. I really feel this is tending more towards a personal connection. But obviously cancer, it, it wouldn't apply to all of you. And some of you are already in a relationship as well. So with the cross heart and book, there can be some deeper intentions, there can be some deeper interest, and perhaps it's unrevealed, it's in the making. Uh, outside of a relationship cancer, if we're gonna sort of uh, manage the cards, push them a little bit outside of a relationship, I could say that you could be pursuing some really interesting things. You could be delving into certain topics and pursuing your passions, and this is definitely encouraged. Now with the key, whip, and book, there can be a bit of a surprise here. There can be something that is revealed that possibly shocks you. And I think it rocks your boat a little bit because we have the whip with the heart and ship. And the whip and heart often points to a disappointment, a heartache, a heartbreak. And with the ship, it can affect what you were like the direction that you thought you were heading into. So like we said, it rocks your boat and we see that these two lines, they T-cross each other at the whip. So clearly, like we said at the outset, there is a challenge that comes up, Cancer, but this is going to be resolved. So let's hang on a bit. The mouse, heart, and clover is lovely for feelings, happiness, and wishes materializing. We have the heart and clover. They work really nicely together to suggest wish fulfillment and happiness. Now the mouse is a bit challenging with the heart. Again, there is the idea of um, some doubts or a bit of a heartache here and um, possibly your hopes being a little bit compromised. But again, with the clover, this is gonna be turned around. The cross with the ship and man is lovely for this um, collaboration or this relationship. Uh, you could be going places with this person or exploring the relationship. Travel in a physical way is possible. I don't think it's the most likely suggestion, but it is possible. But in all cases, uh, Cancer, this is definitely a green light for moving ahead with this person in this relationship. And the cross can suggest some important ventures ahead. You know, this is an important experience, so go with it. The key with the mouse and cross can bring up some challenges. The mouse and cross can suggest doubts and challenges. Uh, I also feel that it can, there are some things that are weighing on you, so it's a bit more psychological and more on the inside. Uh, but again, Cancer, remember that the mouse here is along this line as well. And we have the clover on the other side here that really supports overcoming any doubts or challenges that you could be facing. The um, whip, heart, and ship, like we said, it T-crosses with the whip. So again, we saw that this issue or this revelation rocks your boat a little bit. But here is the lovely line with the book, clover, and man. I think whatever was held back or whatever was not shared or not revealed is going to come through and you're going to be very happy with what you hear. So overall, Cancer, this is a very beautiful portrait. It is really reassuring because it sounds like you are having thoughts or perhaps something happened that caused you to doubt and it turns out that your doubts and the challenges that this brought are unwarranted and so these are going to be resolved and you're going to move forward very nicely with this person. Now I think it seems to me to be a bit more on the personal front, personal relationships, but like I said Cancer, it, it's flexible. And of course, you know, there's, it might not apply to some of you, 
And so the cards are supportive regardless. And the same dynamic would apply whether it was on the job you were waiting for an opportunity and you thought it was going to fall through or something happened that caused you to doubt it while well, that is resolved anything else you're working through maybe with the help of this person you thought it was not going to work out you, you started to have doubts and concerns but then you know things come up and uh, come through and uh, you are reassured that things are moving forward and it's okay so overall cancer it's a very lovely uh, portrait a very lovely month have faith in the solutions have faith that things are going to turn around at the moment that you're facing these issues and soon enough you will be well on your way and remember your very powerful astro clock cards you know they really affect the overall energy and they bring lots of success and happiness and wish fulfillment so i really hope you affirm this for yourself uh, cancer let me know how it played out for you how the month turned out as always i look forward to your thoughts and any details you're willing to share Thank you as always for tuning in. Very best of luck with the month. And until next time, take very good care of yourself. Hello Leo, welcome back to the channel. Thank you as always for tuning in. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Leila, the Lenormand Reader, and I focus almost exclusively on the Lenormand practice. So have a look at all the links and resources that I have for you so you can discover and master this amazing deck. Leo, welcome to April. We are doing your April forecast and we have your April cards from your 2024 Astro Clock. These are challenging cards a little bit. We have the mouse with the scythe that can point to a loss. But because of the road, I think this is a change of direction. And I think, Leo, you decide that you are going to discontinue what you're doing. You're going to change the path because it doesn't sound like it's leading to where you want it to. Uh, there can also be circumstances that cause you to make this change. So we are going to draw your portrait cards and hopefully we'll see bright cards in here. Uh, but also we want to know what this is about a bit more and additional insights for your month of April. So let's put these aside and let's draw your portrait cards. Okay, Leo, this is your portrait and it's looking very bright. We have the sun and the flowers. These are two very bright cards. And so it is lovely to see that you are gonna have uh, some positive energies here that help you overcome uh, the changes that we see in your astro cards. We do have the rider, the ship, and the mountain, and these are all travel uh, cards. And so they associate very well with the idea of a change of direction. We also have the book in the middle of your portrait, and that is the card of the unknown. So this is where I feel it aligns a lot with your Astro Clock cards, where there are changes, maybe unexpected ones or ones that are unplanned. And this could be what shakes up uh, your situation a little bit. But gladly, it looks like you're able to turn this around and move forward. So looking at the first diagonal here with the sun book and fox it is really nice to see the sun as your cover card because you have a lot of optimism and clarity about the situation the book with the fox can mean some things that are unknown there can be something deceptive and something that you need to dig out now with the flowers book and rider i really think that you're able to dig this out the flowers is a card of renewal and openness and the rider is a card of news and it is a messenger so it looks like you are in for a revelation and you're also in for a discovery and i think if there is anything challenging your way leo or anyone trying to be funny with you i think you're going to see through this really well in another sense, Leo, the fox is often a card of jobs and work, and we see it with supportive cards here, with the ship and rider, and with the bottom line, it is also uh, well supported. So you could be in for a new job, a new opportunity, or some new activity or project. And it seems to me that it is unplanned because of the book and the line, and also because of the sudden changes and you know the scythe being sharp that we see in your Astro Clock cards. Now the sun with the anchor and rider is very good for achievement, for arriving, for landing on your goals. It is also uh, an encouragement for you to pursue um, the important things for you, uh, Leo, and to avoid procrastinating. I think it's a good idea to get things done and probably get them out of the way. The mountain book and ship is another mystery combination. Um, the book points to anything unknown, and so with the mountain and ship, you could be in for a new direction, a new place, a new situation that is yet not, not known. 
based on the portrait cards though, it is looking really exciting. It is not challenging in the way that we see in your Astro Clock cards. I think the Astro Clock cards suggest that there are changes that are unplanned and this could rock your boat. And also maybe it stresses you out a little bit as you transition. Now the flowers cross and fox is lovely for work, for uh, also uh, dealing with anything challenging that is potentially suggested by the fox. Uh, I also think that you are in for some important tasks and activities, uh, Leo. And overall, I think once this uh, opportunity is revealed or this news comes through, or you make this discovery, I don't think you can waste time. Like you have to move ahead, you have to uh, make changes, you have to get to work and um, you know get involved. But it's all very bright activity. With the sun, mountain and flowers, I would normally take this to mean a return from somewhere and that may well be the case, um, Leo, that maybe someone returns and it was unexpected and it catches you by surprise. But I also think these are really good cards for overcoming blockages and obstacles. The mountain is sometimes a blockage card. And so with the sun and flowers on either side, it's very clear that you're able to overcome this. And it can be a, a sense of renewal and, um, uh, you know, a sense of freedom and liberation, which is really well matched by these cards as well. Now the anchor book and cross, I think this is where you want to dig in Leo and get to the bottom of things. You have to do some research, you have to um, understand the information, you have to be detailed and it sounds like it's important. Sometimes the book and cross is about religion and spirituality so I associate this with topics that have a certain depth um, or the idea of you know deepening your understanding of any uh, topic. So again, it looks like things are in the works, things are in the making. There's a bit of mystery around this, but I think soon enough it comes through and it gives you a lot of momentum to move forward. The ridership and fox are awesome. It points to adventures and activity and projects. The fox can be tricky, like I said before, but I think with these cards, Leo, we're looking at the work that you need to do, the steps that you need to take. The fox is uh, quite disciplined. It's very good at being consistent and getting things done. And with the rider and ship, Leo, it's definitely a good idea to be consistent and to get things done and to move forward, you know, and to be committed uh, to your projects and to your path. So Leo, I think these are very beautiful cards to see in contrast with your Astro Clock cards. In both sets of cards, we see changes and the idea of a change of direction. Uh, but in your portrait cards, we see that you're able to overcome the stress or the urgency uh, that is that comes through with the, with the opportunity to, to make changes. Because for a while, it's like it's not known what is going to happen. And then it comes through and it opens uh, a lot of opportunity. So you need to act on this opportunity and get to work on it. And I think that is really exciting and it leads to successes. Your cards are, they seem to be focused on work and projects, but I think it can apply in other contexts in your life. The one thing that I'm not really seeing here is people, not so much. Uh, the rider, you know, and the flowers and mountain can suggest the return of someone and a messenger. The fox can be a tricky person, but it also applies in other situations as well. And I'm not really seeing a man, woman, um, you know, the, the dog and other such people. So in general, I think you should be focused on your goals, Leo, and be ready to act on this opportunity. Don't dwell too much on any challenges that come your way as you make this change, because soon enough you'll be well on your way with a lot of energy and momentum to achieve these goals. So let me know how you like these ideas. Uh, let me know your thoughts and comments. Any details you're willing to share are always nice to read. Very best of luck with this, Leo. Thank you for tuning in. And until next time, take very good care of yourself. Hello Virgo, welcome back to the channel. Thank you as always for tuning back in. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Leila, the Lenormand Reader, and I focus almost exclusively on the Lenormand practice. So be sure to have a look at all the resources that I have for you so you can discover and master this amazing deck. Virgo, welcome to April. We have your April cards from your Astro Clock for 2024. And Virgo, these are clear cards that point to bringing something to a completion, wrapping something up, closing something off. We have the Stork, which is a card of action and change. The Coffin is about endings in the middle. And with the Anchor, it really seals off 
this conclusion and this um, ending that we see through the coffin. The thing about the Stoic Virgo is that it can really um, suggest that you do this. So it is a card of initiative, it picks up the pace, it is active. So I really think that it's a good idea for you to bring something to a head this month so you can turn the page in the next month or towards the end of this one. So let's put these cards aside and see what it is that you could be ending and what other insights we can get for your month of April. Okay, Virgo, here is your portrait. And just looking at these cards from like a bird's eye view, I think that what needs to wrap up is a relationship. We have the scythe and heart in here that clearly points to a heartbreak and a disappointment. And so I feel, Virgo, that perhaps now you need to move on from someone uh, or a situation that has disappointed you. We also see the scythe with the fox and really the scythe in the middle is a card of severance and release and it ties in very nicely with your Astro Clock card. We do have some bright cards in the portrait as well. Here we go, we have the star, which is an all around wish fulfillment card. And we have the lovely key as your cover card. So I think you are ready to move on and you're gonna do a great job putting this behind you. And I think it's gonna give you a sense of relief and release. So the key scythe and fox, this could be quite a disappointment because we have the fox with the scythe. So it's like the trickster or the trap that is associated with the fox it plays out uh, but the thing about the key is that you are going to be able to overcome it and solve any issues that it causes you and i also think that the line overall really encourages you to move away and sever any ties you have with people who are negative who are self-interested and who are just not aligned with where you are right now with the rider, scythe, and cross, we're seeing also a sim similar idea. The cross and rider is like a change of direction. It can also be uh, severing a direction, so stopping something. And the scythe and cross can suggest that this is a bit painful or that it causes you some challenges. But again, I feel, Virgo, that you really need to get this done. The cross is also a card of importance, so you need to turn the page at this point, Virgo. Um, this line is helpful actually because the mountain and cross suggest a new chapter but one whose importance you do not yet see so it is um, like in process and uh, with the key here it's important that you align with it so I think it's it's like a decluttering kind of month for you Virgo where you need to remove things people and involvements that are not supportive because you are at a turning point the house scythe and star now that's interesting it could be a house move so this can be obviously releasing relationships because the house is associated with people as well. It can be renovating, it can be decluttering, like I said, but perhaps for some of you Virgos out there, it can mean a move altogether. And the star is very beautiful because it brings healing and wish fulfillment. And so again, I'm seeing it's really important Virgo that you clear up what is, um, what is ending right now and tie up loose ends and declutter the space and your situation so that you can turn the page into a fresh start. We have the writer, heart and fox, and this can be pursuing your objectives. And the fox can be challenging, but it also advises you to be self-interested and to prioritize your goals. So again, I'm seeing that you need to remove distractions, clutter, remove negative people, negative situation, involvements that are wrapping up and anything that is in your way is definitely to be taken care of this month, Virgo. Another thing is that the heart with the fox often points to being half-hearted. And with the rider, this is about moving forward and the actions that you take towards your goals. So putting this together, I'm thinking, Virgo, that if you are feeling uninterested in some things, if you are falling out with certain situations and involvements, if you're half-hearted about certain things, you need to remove them. So I think this, this is going to bring you into focus and to bring your path and your effort towards what really matters to you. Not being distracted, not the things that are sort of, yeah, you're sort of interested, but not really. You know, all of that needs to be cleared up so that you have a sharper focus moving forward. And the scythe is really supportive of that. The key house and writer is great actually for property investments and for 
um, you know, buying, selling, renting, renting out, and things like that. And it does tie into the middle line where I suggested that you could make a house move. So for those of you where this applies, uh, Virgo, it's a very clear message here. Otherwise, it is still a combination of success and achievement. Uh, the key uh, with the house definitely has to do with access and moving into a space, not physically, but I mean the idea of breaking into a certain situation. And with the rider, it gives you a lot of momentum moving forward. So again, I'm seeing this as a success combination. With the mountain scythe and heart, like I said at the outset, this is a bit of a, a painful combination. It can cause a bit of heartache, some disappointment. And with the mountain here, I think you need to confront that because the mountain is a bit of an obstacle card. So I think it's about getting real, Virgo, about what you do want, what you do not want, what has hurt you and you need to move on from, what has disappointed you and is you need to move on from. And, um, you know, it's, it's really like... Um, a clearing up phase where you need to just clear up all of these things inside outside the big the small the emotional the practical you know it's a very good month for doing this kind of clear up and here's a very nice line to wrap up the portrait with the star in the middle we have the cross and fox so this can be a couple of different suggestions sometimes the fox is a card of work so if this is about clearing what you're doing now to move into a new a job that can materialize it can also be about your routine and your practical um, like day-to-day -day matters which i think works really well with everything else here because you need to avoid distractions clear up your space so that you can actually focus on the things that matter to you. The cross is also supportive of that, especially with the star. So these are things that are meant to be. These are things that are important to you. These are your priorities. Get to work on your priorities, Virgo, and remove everything else, everything that is a distraction, that is negative, that is unsupportive, that is hurtful or that hurt you in the past. You know, it's time to remove it because you need to take care of what's important to you. And I think you're going to do this very successfully. The month seems to be focused on the change and the clearing up, but we do see that within the month, you're able to start establishing this new routine that is a lot more productive. But to be fair, you know, the coffin in the middle of the astro clock and the scythe in the middle of your portrait, there is a big focus on the, the decluttering process. So do this, Virgo, you're gonna be very happy that you did. Get all of this off your plate and off your shoulders and move on to what matters to you. Very lovely cards, I would say. I hope you agree. Let me know how it played out for you. Let me know a few things that you are clearing off. You might know that I'm a big fan of the decluttering process. I've even talked about it in my podcast. So Virgo, very best of luck with this. Thank you as always for tuning in. And until next time, take very good care of yourself. Hello Libra, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for tuning in. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Leila, the Lenormand Reader, and I focus almost exclusively on the Lenormand deck. So be sure to have a look at all the links and resources that I have for you so you can master and discover this amazing Lenormand deck. Libra, welcome to April. We have your April cards from the Astro Clock uh, for your 2024 Astro Clock, and these are looking really good. We have the sun and star. These are two of the brightest cards of the deck. And the mountain is sometimes an obstacle card. And so this would mean that you're able to overcome something. Uh, but the mountain is also a card of uh, foreign locations. And with the sun, I tend to see the mountain as a vacation or a summer holiday. So we're not in summer just yet, but uh, it could be a good time for kicking back and enjoying some time off. And of course, achievement and completion and successes are very well highlighted by the cards. So these are looking bright in my experience, uh, uh, Libra, when the Astro Clock cards are so bright, there tends to be some challenging cards in the deck, in the portrait, I mean. So we are going to uh, see, of course, I'm not affirming that, but I, I just want to you know, put things in context and we'll see what else we have um, about these three cards so we get more specific suggestions and any additional insights for your month of April. So let's deal out this portrait. Okay, Libra, here is your portrait. I'm trying to straighten this out as much as possible. It is looking bright thanks to the star and the key and the sun. So two of the very bright cards 
are in here and we also have the mountain in the cards so tight alignment with your astro clock cards we do have a couple of challenging cards the mouse and the snake i tend to expect that and i tend to see it a lot uh, but it's very nice to see these very bright cards uh, because they tell us that you're going to overcome these obstacles which is also what i suggested with the astro clock card so very very closely aligned now the um, key is your cover card which is great because it is a card of insight, of understanding, of intelligence. So it's very clear, Libra, that you have answers within you, that you know what to do, and that you're gonna unlock your potential. The mouse and mountain clearly suggests a speed bump or an obstacle that you need to overcome. And we see this as well in the second diagonal with the ship, mouse, and bear. So with the ship, it can be a bumpy ride. Um, things can be not as smooth as, you, as you'd like them to be. And also Libra the bear can aggravate some things because it makes everything big. But on the flip side, it also makes your successes that much more bigger as well. So it's very clear that you are facing some obstacles, Libra, and that you need to overcome them. Uh, the bear is also a card of strength and power. So I really think that uh, with your key, you're gonna overcome these issues easily. And I also have to say, Libra, that the mouse and uh, snake in terms of obstacles are not especially dramatic. They're not like the whip or the scythe. Um, they are bumpy, you know, they cause issues and glitches. The snake can be a little bit toxic, especially when it comes to people. But with the mouse, uh, the mountain, sorry, I think it's gonna take on a slightly different suggestions let's continue with the top row we've got the key star and bear and this is a very powerful and beautiful line clearly it suggests successes and um, possibly promotions and empowerment of any kind um, so in the face of these issues or these problems and this blockage libra it's clear that you are going to overcome it i'm also suspecting a bit of envy directed your way that's because the snake is uh, the card of envy. Now with the book mouse and snake, I really think this is something that is misleading. I think it could be misinformation or outright lies. And um, I think you're going to see through this Libra. And this is definitely part of the issue that you are overcoming. The book is a card of knowledge. And so if you need to research information, you need to do your homework Libra. Be sure that you cover off all the angles uh, so that you don't fall for any of these um, these problems. The ship, sun, and mountain is lovely. It can seriously suggest a vacation or going somewhere, and it certainly encourages you to. So it could be a good time to get take a break from the issues that you're dealing with and maybe go somewhere. Uh, but also, Libra, if you're not traveling, and of course not every Libra out there is gonna be traveling, these are really good cards for success and for pursuing your objectives and your goals. I appreciate that the mountain is at the end of the line and it's, you know, the obstacle card, but I also think that the sun is so bright that you'll be able to overcome it. And I also think that the ship really encourages you to face up to this. So you've got everything it takes to deal with this. The key with the book and ship is lovely for knowledge, for unlocking potential, and for discovering things. Uh, notice that the book T crosses with the middle line where we saw that there is misleading information or, or gaps or um, you need to read between the lines, you know? And it's clear here with the key that you will figure it out and that you will be able to resolve this issue, this gap, or see through these lies. The star with the mouse and sun, obviously Libra very easily overcoming any of the issues and coming out successful, no issues at all. And with the bear, snake and mountain, I think this is a bit of a trickier line. What I'm seeing here Libra is that the snake and mountain often suggest getting around an obstacle, going around something, maybe someone's back or perhaps there's something going on behind your back. Now the bear is often a card of someone in authority, like managers, people of influence, and, and such folks. And so if there is a person like that in your situation that you need to deal with, it's very important, Libra, that you, um, that you don't be confrontational with them at all and possibly maybe go around the other side. And so being discreet and being tactful and keeping things under your hat, as it were, especially when it comes to this person. 
But overall, Libra, it's very clear that you're able to overcome the obstacles. You are going to get around them and you are going to figure out what is going on. There seems to be something going on behind the scenes because of this line and it T crosses this line. Um, but um, you're going to figure it out. You're going to see through it. I also think, Libra, that if this means that you need to pull back or move away from a certain negative situation or certain types uh, that are questionable, then you do that as well. Um, there is overall success and happiness and uh, fulfillment. And so I really think that you will be able to overcome these issues, get around them in the right way, figure out what's going on and come out on top. So go after your goals, understand this and get past it so you can enjoy your successes and maybe even a vacation. So let me know what you make of these cards, Libra. Let me know in one context you think they played out for you. The details are always interesting to read if you're willing to share them. Thank you as always for tuning in. Very best of luck with the month. And until next time, take very good care of yourself. Hello Scorpio, welcome back to the channel. Thank you as always for tuning back in. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Leila, the Lenormand Reader, and I focus almost exclusively on the amazing Lenormand deck. So be sure to have a look at the links and the resources that I have for you so you can discover and master this amazing deck. Scorpio, welcome to April. We have your April cards from the 2024 Astro Clock. We have the ring, the fox, and the coffin. And this clearly suggests that you could be ending a relationship. You could also be ending a job. The fox is a card of jobs, but it is also a tricky card when it comes to relationships. And so when we see it with the ring, this area could also be highlighted. And so what we're seeing here, Scorpio, is that someone proves to be tricky or a bit deceptive and uh, you could be disappointed and you decide to move on. On the flip side, you could also be losing interest in something or someone and you decide to move on. So uh, clear cards, a uh, clear combination of cards for endings. And it looks like this is what the focus of your month is. Now we're going to set these cards aside and we're going to draw your portrait and see what else we get about these cards, if we see some bright cards that help overcome this, or if we get more details about what this uh, ending is about. So let's deal out this portrait. Okay, Scorpio, here is your portrait and it's looking really bright. We have the child and the ship, we have the fish. It's looking really active and this element of change that starts with your Astro Clock cards is very well highlighted in the cards, in the portrait cards. We have this column that is very much about house moves and big changes like that. We have the child which is about new beginnings and we have the bird in the middle which adds a bit of anxiety uh, but it is also a card of conversations and discussions. So let's see how this comes together especially with the um, with the Astro Clock card since we have the coffin and child in both sets which means that there's a beginning and an ending. Now the ship as your cover card is lovely because you're up for adventure. And uh, I think this is a, a good thing, Scorpio, where you feel like you're done with something and you need to move on. With the bird and child, this is about a new beginning. And um, you could be negotiating this new start. You could be talking about it or asking questions about it. It's definitely a good idea to get informed and to be active in this sense, Scorpio. The, the bird is sometimes a card of travel and we have the ship and also the stork. So going somewhere could also be at hand for you and this could be quite exciting as well. Now the house with the bird and anchor, I feel there is here a negotiation around staying. And I think Scorpio that maybe some people want you to stay whereas you want to go. And so this is where the bird and anchor comes through and the bird and house. So there is a need to negotiate and have a conversation and talk about, you know, the changes that you want to see, this new beginning that you want to do. It seems to affect some people. The ship with the fish and anchor is really good for finances. I really think that you need to have your financial picture in order, Scorpio. You also need to restrict spending and to have a budget and to be... Uh, a bit more disciplined about your finances, especially if you're going to go for these ventures and adventures. You know, it, it's, a, it's a good idea to have a really good um, picture around this. And the cards are also really good for your financial success. So the changes that you could be making involve achieving a better uh, foundation for your security, for your money in general, not just um, about the day-to-day -day expenses and the budgeting and all that. 
The stroke with the bird and heart is exciting. I think you want to make changes and you want to go after the things that you want. The bird is sometimes anxious and so with the heart there can be you know, some doubts or some, some issues like that. But I think overall it's really about the excitement that you have for the changes ahead. The house with the woman and child can point to a new relationship, uh, but also she could be the person you negotiate with for the changes that you're after. And she could be someone you meet. I think that there is a new opportunity. Like I said, it looks uh, money related, work related, and the, the reason you're making these changes and ending certain commitments is so that you can attract more prosperity, more security, and a more stable situation moving forward. And at the same time, you're up for adventure and changes. So it seems to affect some people in your surroundings, or it can involve new people that you meet. You know, there is, there is some collaboration and some conversations that we see here. The ship, stork, and house is great for a house move and actually even for moving countries. Now, I appreciate not all of you are going to be moving homes or moving countries, Scorpio, but we're definitely seeing the need for change. So this is the time to remove uh, things that are in your way, declutter, talk things out, clarify matters, and make the changes that you want to make. The fish with the bird and uh, woman can be conversations around money. Um, this can be in relation to your home or your household where you need to make some negotiations or to straighten things out. It's also a good idea to do this, getting everyone on the same page. Um, and also she could be the person you negotiate with for the new job or the new opportunity. The bird in the center of all of this, as Scorpio, emphasizes the need to talk things out and to uh, collaborate and to express, to ask questions, to get information, to inform others, and so on. Um, so it really comes because you are ending something and people need to be aware that there are changes ahead. The anchor heart and child is beautiful for supporting a new beginning, for encourage, encouraging you to embrace this new beginning. And also, Scorpio, this is about doing the things that you love and committing to them. And so I think that ending what isn't in your interest anymore, or like I said, you know, you're sort of falling out with some things, you're half-hearted about them, you're not really interested in them, it's time to reshuffle all of this so that you can re-engage on all levels with the things that you want to do and to get to work on doing them. So commit to that and make sure that you, you do that, okay? So no more wasting time. It's time to pick up the changes and to bring these things to an end, to talk to the people who are relevant to you in this picture and to get to work on this. And also, like I said a bit earlier, um, travel is possible. So maybe you're taking a break and so you need to make arrangements, you know, in order to enjoy this vacation. So I think it's an active month, Scorpio. It's also an exciting month where you can bring something to a close and move on and embrace positive changes across different areas of your life. Let me know what you make of these ideas. Let me know what changes are ahead for you. As always, I look forward to the details if you're willing to share them. Thank you for tuning in, Scorpio. Very best of luck with the month. And until next time, take very good care of yourself. Hello, Sagittarius. Welcome back to the channel. Thank you, as always, for tuning back in. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Leila, the Lenormand Reader, and I focus almost exclusively on the amazing Lenormand deck. So be sure to explore the resources that I have for you so you can discover and master this amazing set of cards. So Sagittarius, welcome to April. I have here your April cards from the 2024 Astro Clock and they're looking really bright uh, thanks to the flowers mainly, which is a very happy card. And they're also very clear. So with the letter and dog, there is news from someone and with the flowers, it typically points to hearing back from someone. So the flowers is an element of renewal, of coming back. So often it brings feedback and hearing back from someone. Maybe they wear away or maybe you're waiting to hear from them and, and they respond. And apart from that, the flowers is a lovely card. So it does answer wishes positively. It uh, suggests that the news is good and it's what you want to hear. There's also probably some good times with a friend. The dog is a card of friends and friendships, uh, but it can also mean a colleague, a sibling, or really anyone in your peer group. So this is looking really bright. Let's see what the um, portrait cards bring. Sometimes they can be challenging when the Astro Clock cards are bright, uh, but let's see what comes up and if we uh, find out more about the letter 
and the dog and any other messages for your April month. So let us deal this portrait. Okay, Sagittarius, here is a lovely portrait thanks to the lovely clover right in the middle of everything. And we also have the letter that shows up in the cards, which aligns with what we're seeing in the Astro Clock cards. So there's definitely some really good news here. Uh, but what the, uh, the portrait cards are adding to the Astro Clock cards is this element of an ending. And I have to say, Sagittarius, these weeks and this month, I'm seeing a lot of endings and changes for many of us. Um, I've been seeing it a lot in the weekly readings as well, and it's clear that it's in your, in your portrait cards. Now the clover makes everything lovely, so definitely this is a positive ending and the need to make a change. The book with the clover and coffin can mean that things are on hold. Um, like I suspected from the flowers, you could have been waiting for feedback and um, you will get the news. Obviously, we see this in many different lines. Starting with the second diagonal, we have the lily with the clover and anchor. So this is a very positive message, a very positive um, conclusion. And there is an element of arrival because of the anchor. It is like a card that concludes and achieves. The lily is often a card of career. And with the clover and anchor, you, get, you could get some really good news with regards to work. I'm suspecting here a work offer or some other kind of opportunities for you that we also see in the Astro Clock cards. Sometimes the Lily is a card of health and if you'd been um, concerned about something, I think you will find that you have positive feedback and positive steps forward. We'll get to this column in a bit because it is very much a card of a uh, combination of endings. Now the book with the fox and anchor is I think a bit of a waiting game here. Um, the fox is a bit of a tricky card. It can be a little bit deceptive and we also have the book. So this can be a bit of a mystery, but what I'm also thinking here, Sagittarius, is because the book is your cover card, I think there are some things that you need to keep under your hat, keep to yourself, at least for the time being, until you hear back. So hang, hang in there, the news is coming through, and until then, sort of sh don't share your plans too much. And instead, maybe take the, t take the time for you to do more planning and more strategies. The letter with the clover and road is lovely. This is really good news that helps you move forward and it T-crosses this column. So the road and coffin is the end of the road and certainly with the anchor, we see this very clearly. So you've arrived to the end of the road where you are and this news opens up a new opportunity. We see another ending here with the coffin at the end of the line. We have the lily garden and coffin. This can mean that you wrap up a job somewhere that you leave. You could also be making deeper changes like a career change. Uh, but also, um, Sagittarius, the, the line here can point to health and the need to rest and take a break. And if you do, it's going to be very good for you. It's going to help you recover your energy. So there are changes and endings. And regardless of where they figure in your life or in what area, it's a good idea to take a bit of time out between the the new, the old chapter and the new chapter, uh, Sagittarius. It's my suggestion based on these cards. Now the book letter and Lily is a uh, very important news. I really think this is an offer. It aligns with the Astro Clock cards. And like we said, the Lily is a card of work. So I, so I really think that something positive is coming your way and it looks to be focused on work. It's certainly confirmed in this line. We have the Fox, Clover and Garden. The Fox is often a card of jobs. The lily is often a card of career. The garden can be uh, the job, the workplace as well. And so with the clover, we have another suggestion that you could be getting some really good news for the job. It seems to me that it's a job change, but regardless, it's still some really positive outcomes uh, for you on the job. More generally, the garden is about community and people. And so you could be enjoying some really uh, some really good social environments, some activities, some events with people. I just want to suggest, Sagittarius, that be, the fox being a little bit tricky when it comes to people, you know, just be sure you know who you're with and you understand the types of people that you are with. But also, remember that the fox, he crosses the top row, and I suggested that you keep some things under your hat. So when it comes to this environment here, 
you know, mix and mingle and be with others, but also don't share everything that you have in mind. You have to wait things out. Now the anchor road and coffin, like we said, is very much an end of the road and a con conclusion. I think it's potentially also an achievement because there are so many positive cards around. You could have successfully completed something and you're now ready to move on to something else. So overall, Sagittarius, there's a lot of success in your cards. There is achievement. Uh, and there is also a key line of thought that we see through both sets of cards here is that you're waiting on some news. And this news seems to be what gives you the ability to move on. But in all cases, you are working towards achieving something. So be sure that you wrap things up and close things off because when opportunity comes, you want to be ready uh, for the change. At the same time, taking a break, taking time out, moving away a little bit between chapters is a really good idea. So these are some really bright cards, Sagittarius, I would say in any context. They're great for work, they're great with people, they're great with health, they're great for completion and achievement. Really across the board, they do really well. It's just about being a little bit patient for the news to come through, for things to materialize, and also to complete whatever uh, needs to be wrapped up at this stage. So let me know what you make of these ideas, Sagittarius. As always, I look forward to your thoughts and your feedback. Any details are always interesting to read if you're willing to share them. Very best of luck with the month. Thank you as always for tuning in and until next time, take very good care of yourself. Hello Capricorn, welcome back to the channel. Thank you as always for tuning in. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Leila, the Lenormand Reader, and I focus almost exclusively on the Lenormand deck. So be sure to have a look at the resources and the links that I have for you so you can explore and master these amazing cards. Capricorn, welcome to April. We have your April cards from your 2024 Astro Clock, and these are quite interesting. Well, the key and the cross, which are key cards for spiritual matters, and they also highlight important things happening. We also have the anchor in the middle, which is really good for a solid foundation, for a conclusion, for arriving at something. So this can be a significant achievement, Capricorn. So this can be a significant achievement, Capricorn, and it suggests that you're in for an important phase. Now the cards like this as they stand, they're a little bit general. We're going to draw your portrait cards to see in what area this is happening or what exactly is that positive conclusion and that is uh, of significance that is ahead for you. And also we'll get some other insights for your April uh, forecast. So let's go ahead and deal out your portrait. Okay, Capricorn, here is your portrait and notice that we have the anchor also in the center of it, which really emphasizes the importance of this card for you this month. Um, definitely about uh, st standing where you are, staying put, I would say avoiding changes, but also achieving some very good conclusions. Now what's interesting is that we also have the child, which is a card of change actually along with the road. So what could be happening here is that you don't want to change your mind about the directions that you're already heading into. It looks like you are on the right track. You are on the right track towards this new beginning and the anchor really gives you courage and a sense of confidence in your path. Earlier we have the bird, which actually explains why we have the anchor, possibly also the scythe. The bird can be a bit of an anxious causing card. It can cause a bit of worry and anxiety and nervousness, but definitely with the anchor, you don't want to feel this way, Capricorn. There's no need. Um, you stand strong. You have everything you need. And we have the road here. So it clearly tells us that you should pursue this path. You should continue on this path. Now, how this works with the garden uh, anchor and child, well, the way I'm seeing it at Capricorn is that you are on track to, to this new start. You are heading there and so you want to keep heading there. You don't want to change. Uh, you don't want to change your mind about embracing this new beginning. You are on the right track. It's also um, a nice combination, the garden and anchor, for staying put within a certain environment. It is really good for confidence and a sense of stability and being anchored within a space. And even if this is a new space for you, I think you'll find that you are able to quickly create a foundation and establish yourself in it. Now looking at the bird, scythe, and child. Now, this is a bit tricky, uh, Capricorn, because for you, this idea of sticking with something and the new beginning are going together. The bird with the scythe and child can point to an announcement. It can be a sudden announcement. 
because of the scythe and uh, the child points to a new beginning. I think that we could be looking at a breakaway and what uh, really informs this is the T-cross with this column. We have the anchor and dog and the anchor and scythe typically points to an uprooting. Now I'm seeing that this is with a relationship and I'm also seeing uh, a similar message with the uh, garden dog and road which points to a relationship that is parting. So it looks to me Capricorn that you are not going to be distracted by others from your path. Um, you are heading in this new direction and you're going to keep heading there. It's important that you do that and if people get in your way then this is what might be removed. Um, in terms of your Astro Clock cards, I feel the cross can come in here for some tough decisions that you make. Along with the key and anchor, you need to be really solid and standing strong in your goals, your intentions, and weighing things out really well. So again, Capricorn, you're heading in a new direction. It's a good thing. Don't change your mind from it. But if people are going to try to sway you away from it, then you need to remove these distractions. Now in the second line, we have the moon anchor and fish, which is really good for finances, for financial uh, strength and stability. It can be an offer or an invitation, but I think it's also things working out really well for you and a feeling of security. So these are really bright cards. Um, this is something that you need to protect and ensure that is not, uh, is not affected by the changes or by other people. And like I said, the garden dog and road points to a change from certain people. This can be a move, this can be letting go of certain uh, people. And the reason I saw that is because of this, um, the T crossing. So the dog T crosses the central column, which T crosses the top row. And I felt that putting these three together, it tells me Capricorn that some people might want to distract you or might want you to um, you know, might not want you to pursue your goals and things like that. These are the people and the situations that you're, need, you're going to need to part away from in order to commit to this path that seems to be a new beginning for you. And also, I think it's important to be um, pretty protective of your security overall and make sure there aren't distractions uh, that, can, uh, that can affect that in any way. Now the bird, moon and garden is an invitation. It can also be going out, probably at night, hanging out with people. Uh, it can be celebrations or certain events and that is totally fine. Maybe you're spending a bit of uh, some time with people. But again, this is an environment where you might discover uh, that some folks might be distracting you or perhaps they're not aligned with your focus. Actually, that's a really good word, Capricorn. I think you're really focused this month and I think your focus is your priority. Now the child fish and road is lovely for your um, new financial direction here. It's very good for prosperity. It could be a new job and it does involve change. But again, for you Capricorn in this reading, it's quite interesting how what you're sticking with is the changes that you're committing to, this, this new beginning that you're heading into. Don't change your mind. You're heading in the right direction. This new chapter is going to be beneficial for you. It's other people or other situations that could be distracting you from this that you need to make sure won't distract you and that you need to um, like sort of avoid or get away from in one way or another. So overall Capricorn, this is a, a pretty solid month for your positive changes and for your foundations for a new beginning, probably one that affects your work, your finances and your security overall. There can be some decisions that you need to make. Uh, but it's clear to me, Capricorn, that you are heading in the right direction and that you don't want to be swayed in any way. Okay, so focus on that and remove distractions, including if these distractions are people. So let me know what you make of these ideas, Capricorn. This is a very interesting uh, set of cards. I look forward to the details if you're willing to share them. A very best of luck with the month. Thank you, as always, for tuning in. And until next time, take very good care of yourself. Hello Aquarius, welcome back to the channel. Thank you as always for tuning back in. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Leila, the Lenormand Reader, and I focus almost exclusively on the amazing Lenormand deck. So be sure to have a look at the links that I have for you and the resources so you can discover and learn about this amazing deck. 
So Aquarius, welcome to April. We have your April cards from the 2024 Astro Clock, and these are a little bit challenging. We have the mouse and fox that can suggest someone questionable, and the tower here can point to a few different things. It can mean that it has to do with some kind of authority or maybe an administrative or legal matter. It can also suggest an issue that is from the past or that has been long standing. I also think Aquarius that you're getting tired with something and that you're losing interest in something. I think you've given it enough time and at this point you might want to draw the line. So we'll get more details about this from your portrait cards and see how you can turn this around Aquarius. Um, maybe the portrait cards are very bright. Uh, in this case, it's definitely a good sign to stop doing the things that are dragging you down and that you're no longer interested in. And I'm seeing a lot of changes, Aquarius, in the weeklies, a lot in the monthly, uh, across different signs as well. So we're in for changes. So let's go ahead and see what your portrait cards bring, uh, what they suggest for you in view of these Astro Clock cards. Okay, Aquarius, here is your portrait and there are a couple of really bright cards. We have the key and star, and this tells us that you will be able to overcome these challenges. And we're also seeing the challenging aspect that we saw in your Astro Clock cards. We have the whip and the fox. We have the man here, which represents a person, and we have the dog, which is a friend. Uh, as your cover card. So I think a relationship comes into the picture here, Aquarius, and maybe this is the long-standing situation or the area from the past that is, um, that is challenging and that comes into focus. Now we have the mountain in the center and the mountain can suggest a couple of different things. It can point to a blockage, which I think is the most likely uh, thing that it is for you in this portrait. It is also a card of travel and we do have the ship because it's associated with a place in a different location. So it looks like there's a few different things happening for you this month. Uh, let's uh, put this all together and see uh, what are the what is the guidance for you. Now the dog with the mountain and lily, I really think Aquarius that you could be wondering about the longer term maybe your life and your lifestyle, maybe where you live. Um, I think you could be looking at if you should contemplate a different place. In view of your Astro Clock cards, I feel that maybe where you have been might not be working out as much. And maybe now you're looking at a um, different location or a different way of doing things. The Lily is also a card of career. So this can also apply with your work. Maybe you're thinking of a different job or a different situation. The man with the mountain and star is a helpful person. Uh, so the star is a wish fulfillment card. It is a, a lovely card actually for healing and success. And so it looks like this person here who might be in a different location uh, or not can help you with perspective, with support uh, through these thoughts that you're having, through the idea that you could be, you know, reaching the tail end with the things that you had been doing for a while and now you could be contemplating another situation. So this person can come in to help you with that and maybe to offer insight. Now the dog with the whip and star adds to this. I think that the star really helps you overcome challenges. I think you are going to find your way, but I have to say Aquarius that it's not without some struggle. The whip can be pretty challenging. It T crosses the middle line. We have the mountain and ship. And I think that this is, this upsets the plans either to travel or to go places or to pursue certain projects. But I think Aquarius, the bigger picture of your life is coming into focus. And I think that the whip with the mountain and ship can upset a little bit the initial vision that you had for yourself. And I think you need to attend to this pretty soon and start to think seriously about how you're gonna make these changes. But it looks like the path you're on or the things that you'd been pursuing, you know, they're starting to taper off, they're starting to dwindle away. It's not what it used to be and I think you're starting to have a change of heart about them. 
Now the key with the mountain and fox is actually really good for jobs. Uh, the fox is usually a job card. It, it can be a tricky card, but I think with the key and the star and the lily next to it, we could be looking at your work. Um, with the mountain, it can be a different place or a place online, or it can be the obstacles that you're facing, but uh, the key really helps with that. So you can get an opportunity maybe that takes you to another place. Also find answers for the blockages that you're facing. Uh, and again, as we saw in your Astro Clock cards, Aquarius, you could be getting tired from what you've been doing and maybe now you're looking at a change. So this, uh, these cards here really bring answers and possibly opportunity, but I think there is, um, there is a change that you are contemplating. The man with the ship and lily is also supportive. This is um, a great for your career, for your projects. This could be someone you collaborate with or perhaps if it has to do with travel and going places, you could be going to visit this person or he comes to visit you or you visit together. So very lovely cards that really help you get unstuck and really help you find answers or at least begin to find answers for what I think is you know, starting to lose its appeal. The dog with the key and, uh, and man is another really good one. Uh, also a very supportive um, person here, trustworthy, really good answers. So again, opportunity and unlocking potential. Uh, like we said, the whip with the mountain and ship, I really think that this could change your plans, Aquarius. I think the vision that you, were ha that you had is gonna change. I think there are some things that are upsetting this and now you need to act on this. Here's a very lovely line to wrap up the portrait with. The star, fox and lily are great for work and career and I think you're gonna land on a really good job situation, career situation or overall lifestyle. So these are some really good cards. Uh, very nice to see in contrast with the Astro Clock cards, Aquarius. They tell us that you are aware of the problem first off and you are seeing that maybe things need to change. Um, it's not what you had in mind, it's not what you planned for, but here you are and I think you are looking for solutions, tapping into possibilities, and it looks like there's a person who comes into the picture to further support with this. If this is about travel, I think it can be a little bit bumpy, but um, you know maybe doing some exploring can be helpful. Just make sure you plan this well, Aquarius. So very nice cards, very nice turnaround. Let me know what you make of them, Aquarius, and what context they figured for you. As always, I look forward to any details you're willing to share. Thank you as always for tuning in. Very best of luck. And until next time, take very good care of yourself. Hello, Pisces. Welcome back to the channel. Thank you for tuning in. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Leila, the Lenormand Reader, and I focus almost exclusively on the amazing Lenormand deck. So be sure to have a look at the links that I have for you so you can explore and discover this amazing set of cards. Pisces, welcome to April. We have your April cards from the 2024 Astro Clock. And these are looking pretty exciting. They seem to be focused on travel and going places. Uh, we have the ship in the middle. It is the main card of travel and we have the bird, which can also be about travel, although it's about smaller trips like going places. And we have the anchor before everything. Now the anchor is a card of staying in the same location, staying put. But when we see the ship and bird after the anchor, it can mean that you're gonna pick up and leave and, and go places. Um, and so travel and uh, you know going out and doing things is highlighted for you this month. So right from the get-go, at least based on your Astro Clock cards, it looks like it's gonna be pretty busy. Now, if travel doesn't apply to you, Pisces, and I don't expect that every single Pisces out there is gonna be traveling, these are really good cards for doing things differently, for getting out of the status quo, for changing up a little bit how you've been doing things. So the anchor is a bit rigid and the ship is much more flowing. So it's a really good idea, Pisces, to be open to doing things a little bit differently, explore options, and with the bird, you might want to ask questions to see how you can approach things differently. So again, a sense of adventure and activity is, um, is what we're seeing for you based on these Astro Clock cards. So let's go ahead and put these aside and we're going to draw your portrait and see what else we get about them or other additional insights uh, for your forecast. Okay, Pisces, here is your portrait, and I have to say it is really interesting, mainly because of the whip that sort of shows up a little bit out of the blue. 
we'll see what it tells us uh, in the different lines. Uh, we do have the ship in your portrait as your cover card on top of that and we also have the anchor i think as your cover card i think we are definitely seeing some traveling and some going places what's beautiful is the star in the middle of everything the star is an all-around wish fulfillment cards so i think you could be achieving some big goals uh, you could also be uh, you know, going with the flow and really in touch with your goal and your purpose. And what should also stand out, Pisces, is the relationship element here. We have both the man and the woman in the cards. We also have the dog. And um, so there can be some very happy things uh, happening in terms of relationships. And we'll see how the whip plays out because it is a challenging card. Now the ship star and woman is great for travel. Um, obviously it is well starred for you to go places and explore places or maybe pursue different ventures and adventures. And the woman in here can be someone you meet in the process. It can be about uh, connections and friendships and uh, doing things together. She could also be someone who um, supports your ambitions and your goals and uh, so again I'm seeing a supportive connection here. The anchor with the star and fish is really good for money. You could achieve some financial goals, um, you could be pursuing um, some business or some work goals and clearly with the star in the middle you do really well. Now we are going to see the whip next to the fish as well so let's see how the picture comes together. Now the ship, dog, and fish is great for going out with friends, going out with people, um, exploring friendships, but also it's really good for customers and business and um, doing well on the job, doing well at work. So there is a strong element of prosperity for you this month. Now the man, star, and whip brings challenges because of the whip. It is actually the most challenging card of the deck. And what I'm seeing here is that the whip after the star can create a disappointment or perhaps wishes don't fulfill to the extent that you're hoping for. We also see um, it's the first time we're reading the man in the portrait. It can represent uh, anyone really, uh, but uh, it is a relationship clearly that is uh, in the cards. And with the star and whip, it can be a positive relationship, but maybe not to the extent that you were hoping for. Now, the whip T crosses this line as well. So I am wondering, uh, Pisces, if there might be a separation or a fallout with a relationship, and maybe that's because you are moving on and going places and exploring different opportunities for yourself. That could be the case. But what also is in focus is something that would need to be resolved. And when we see this side of the portrait, we see that there is the anchor that connects the man and woman as well. So there can be something that comes up. I think it's pretty challenging, it's potentially pretty serious, uh, but I also think that it's uh, not necessarily the end of the road. I'm not really seeing it as the end of the road. I think that there might be a need to, I think there might be a need to get a better understanding of what's behind this, which is what I think happens in these lines. Um, the anchor with the book and woman is actually supportive of that. Um, the book is a card of mysteries and the unknown, but the anchor really supports you getting to the bottom of this. And with the woman, again, it brings this uh, relationship into the picture. The ship with the man and anchor further supports this. This was uh, what I was just saying. So the anchor can maintain the connection, but there needs to be a better understanding of what is going on here. Now, it's possible also that some person arrives and with the anchor book and woman, maybe it wasn't expected. I think here there might be an opportunity to connect with someone and yes, an issue will come up, uh, but it does. it is a good thing that you're able to do this, uh, Pisces. Maybe it's going to help uh, with the relationship moving forward. That's interesting. I think depending on your circumstances, actually, I think this can be pretty exciting because my feeling is that uh, maybe there was a bit of mystery for some time and maybe there was an issue uh, that resurfaces and there is an opportunity to do this. Now the dog star and book is really bright. It brings a very positive revelation and this ties into the bottom row, uh, which I think again digging into 
um, this is going to be helpful. The fish with the whip and woman can bring some challenges, probably some financial challenges. There can be some differences that come up in this regard. Um, but again, because of the star with the woman, the star and the fish, I think you will be able to overcome uh, these challenges, Pisces. So the whip is in a really interesting position in the portrait, and it does bring challenges, but it doesn't it doesn't mess up the whole picture. You know, we have the star in the middle here, which is all around wish fulfillment. Instead, I think it brings certain things out into the open and also um, it empowers you to deal with things. It might also be that you need to tackle any challenges with a bit more energy and aggression or, um, you know, a bit more speed, you know, a bit more urgency. So I think there's quite a few things that are happening for you this month, Pisces. Uh, the focus is on changes and travel and adventures and a lot of wish fulfillment. There's also a focus on prosperity and doing well with your work and your business. There's also a focus on relationships and this can bring some challenges um, that come through in order to see how you resolve them. Now, I don't really see how this relationship issue is resolved within the month, but certainly there is an opportunity to get together with this person and to explore that. So Pisces, it's looking like a busy month, honestly. There's quite a lot going on. I think there's a few different things going on all at the same time, and I think you're gonna be busy, but a lot of good things are happening. So be sure you focus on that, despite some challenges that also surface. And see how you explore this relationship. See how you move forward with it. Very interesting. I hope you'll let me know. Leave me your thoughts and your feedback. Uh, the details are always interesting to read if you're willing to share them. Best of luck with this, Pisces. Thank you, as always, for tuning in. And until next time, take very good care of yourself.